Good afternoon. Welcome to our faith community of Sacred Heart on this fourth Sunday of Easter. My name is Catherine Mayhem. As the shepherd guards his flock, keeping it safe from harm, so too are we loved and protected by our good and caring God. Trusting in his protection, we give ourselves over to God's ever-present care. The scripture reading and responsible for psalm are in the hymnal under number 1071. If you have a cell phone or other electronic device, please be sure to silence the mass. The mass today is being offered for the eternal rest of Winifred Gibson. We thank you for maintaining social distancing when possible and for continuing to wear your mask or face covering throughout mass. We have with us today a young student, Mary Corinne Hans, who will be receiving her first communion. She has been preparing for many months for this important occasion in her faith journey. At this time, we ask that you please stand and join in singing the opening hymn, 402, Like a Shepherd. <laughs>
them living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. We do not know that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, 
for we, will, we shall see him as he is. The word of the Lord. I think all of us at different points in our lives. Oh, let's see, I'll miss one, one other group of people here. John and Paul, here. All right over there, okay. Deacon John, now we can call him Paul. So, well, there are uh, former parishioners here. Now, as soon as um, John was ordained uh, deacon, they snatched him away from us. So I told him before Mass, you all are welcome to come back to our parish if you want to so. Okay, it's nice to meet you all. So, welcome back. You know, all of us, um, different points in our lives, uh, there are a lot of things, probably many things in life that we just don't appreciate. We're kind of used to it, or we just take it for granted. A lot of things, you know, some material things, in fact, that we really just take for granted. Sometimes um, there might be some, something very valuable that we don't even know we have. That being an example. Other times, there might be something that we have that actually has great value. You know, we're aware of its presence among us, but we don't realize it's great value. So, I have a couple of examples. Let's see now. Okay, good. The paper is still here. That would have been bad. <laughs> and I was looking up um, earlier today about some examples. You know, you always um, see these things on the news. Occasionally, there's like these rare finds that people find in their attics and things like that. They didn't even know they were there. Great value. So, here's one from a couple of years ago. Um, and in 2018, an ornately decorated porcelain vase sat unnoticed in an old shoebox in the attic of a house in France. 
The owners discovered the vase and were curious about its value. So they asked Sotheby's auction house in Paris to appraise its value. To their shock and amazement, the vase turned out to be from the Zhang Dynasty in China, dating from the 18th century. It sold an auction for $19 million. Can you imagine that, find that in your, uh, in your attic in a shoebox? So that's an example of, um, you know, something that uh, someone didn't even realize was in their house, and they found it in the attic. Now this other example, also in the news, a couple of years ago also, there was something that this woman was quite aware of. She had in her kitchen every day, every day. So around the same time, uh, a few years ago, a woman also in France, that's interesting, had a 10 by 8 inch painting hanging in her kitchen over the hot plate where she did her cooking. She just thought it was a Greek religious icon. It turned out to be a painting called Christ Mott by an early Italian Renaissance master, Cimabue, if I'm saying that correctly. It sold for $26 million. And it was hanging over this lady, she was an elderly lady, and it was hanging over the hot plate. For a year, she was cooking, so you know, thank God the thing was done. But you know, these are examples. The first example is something that people didn't even realize they had. Second example, someone, um, they saw they had it, but they had no idea of its value. So, you know, there are many times in life, not just material things, but things that we um, don't realize we have in life, other things that we realize we have, but in either case, we don't, we don't recognize, we don't appreciate the value. Sometimes, you know, it can be with each other. You know, maybe in marriage, family, friendship, you know, if we have these friends and maybe we do not value um, the people in our lives. We don't realize, like, you know, what a treasure, what a treasure we have here. And so it is uh, with Christ himself. And so it was with Christ. We heard in the first reading um, today from the Acts of the Apostles, where um, it's kind of beautiful. And of course, the uh, responsorial psalm that our choir sang, um, a stone, Cornerstone. The stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Um, the stone rejected by the builders has become the cornerstone. Do we have any architects in here? Keith Miller not here. We have an architect in our parish. Um, as you probably know, um, cornerstones play a very important role in buildings for a couple of reasons. Kind of the history of a building, um, the, what year the building was uh, built. Um, also, uh, really has sometimes a, a place of pride with the building make it very very special uh, sometimes it might even they might even put things in there almost like time capsules but also kind of celebrating the existence of the building also they had a very practical purpose especially in the early days of construction where they would typically take a large um, cornerstone and put it in the corner and everything was kind of based on that so a very very special place in that so jesus um, of course was a cornerstone but I think that uh, many people recognized his value. Uh, many other people did not recognize um, his value. So we can uh, sit here 2,000 years later and say, well, gosh, come on, people. How could you not know? How could you not know that that was Jesus, something very special, right? Well, you know, this was all new to them. But what about us? I mean, really, you know, sometimes with our spiritual life, we can kind of do the same thing, can't we? We recognize you know, intellectually, who Jesus was. We realize, okay, he's the son of God, he's our savior, and that's good. But, you know, do we take him for granted? Do we really not realize what a treasure we have in our faith and what a treasure we have um, with Jesus? As I mentioned, um, Mary Corinne, you're right in front. Now, um, she's going to celebrate her first communion, and she and her mom, they came to talk to me uh, after Mass last week. And she was so excited about it. She's so excited. And this, uh, today, too, before Mass, I was kind of talking to her and the family. And she's like, kind of actually literally bouncing up and down, like, excited, you know? And now there's somebody who uh, totally appreciates what she's about to receive here at communion. How often do we adults, hey, the priest included, priest included, we do so many Masses. How often do we just kind of go through the motions? And we say, well, yeah, of course, it's Mass, it's Mass. And we forget what, what an amazing thing this is, that we are going to, you know, receive Jesus. We're going to receive in, in Mary Corinne's case for the very first time. But, you know, do we, do we forget about the, what, what a treasure we have? Um, 
you know, there are people too, maybe, who have never in their life um, so far discovered their faith. It could be, you know, maybe people who are not Christian, maybe people not raised in any faith, and they're not aware of a treasure that awaits them. That would be kind of like the first example of these people that have this, this base in their attic. They didn't even know of its existence. So we have people um, who did not discover Christ. Uh, we have other people, of course, uh, maybe include us, who are aware of Christ's existence. But like the people and the woman in the second example had this um, priceless painting in her kitchen over the hot plate and she didn't realize the value. She did not even realize the value. Those would be us who are, you know, know about Christ's existence, but don't really appreciate, my gosh, what, what do we have here, you know? Sometimes uh, it's been said, and I think it's very true, sadly, that many times the one time that we really appreciate life and our faith and each other is maybe when we have been given a, a diagnosis, you know, maybe cancer, some other uh, terminal illness. That at that point, maybe we said, wow, wow, you know, um, now I can really appreciate uh, life that I'm about to lose it. Well, hopefully we don't wait. We don't wait till you know, we've been diagnosed with some terminal illness. But hopefully that in, in our perfect health, you know, whether we're young, whether we're old, that we truly appreciate, you know, what we have um, in our faith. And really hope we do that. I hope that, um, you know, not only we come to Mass, that's a wonderful thing, of course. Uh, it's a good thing to do. But I, I really uh, hope that in our homes, in our families, that we truly appreciate each other in the household and not become kind of used to each other too much, but we really appreciate each other and what a treasure each one of us is to each other. And along with that, because it's all connected, since we're the body of Christ, I really hope that um, having just celebrated Easter, that we truly appreciate the treasure that we have in Christ and, and in our faith. And I hope that all of us, even when we uh, come up to receive communion, are as excited as these young people, they're going to receive their first communion. And uh, what a reminder that is. You know, we children can teach us a lot, can't they? You know, the preacher man gets up here, I do my best to tell you, uh, you know, teach people about the faith. And of course we have scripture, but sometimes um, children, Christ himself said it, that, uh, you know, uh, the heaven and kingdom of whom belongs to such as these. You know, so um, a lot of times the children can teach us about, um, you know, being excited about life and being excited about the faith. So I hope that we, um, as we go through our lives, that we um, truly realize the treasure that we have um, in our faith and that we never take that for granted, never take each other for granted. And in doing that, that we have the excitement of a little child about to receive her first communion. Let us together profess our faith. I believe sessions is, Risen Lord, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, hear our prayer. 
for bishops, priests, and all who shepherd the church. May they be models of love and compassion as they serve God's people, we pray. For peace and healing in the human family, may the Good Shepherd lead us away from violence and warfare into ways that will help us defeat poverty, disease, and ignorance, we pray. For all who are called to announce the good news, preachers, teachers, retreat leaders, and parents, may they give bold witness to Jesus, the Savior of all, we pray. For all who are making their first communion this weekend, especially Mary Corinne, may they continue to grow in their faith, we pray. For our members who are ill, we pray. For all who have died, May their souls and all the souls of the faithful find resurrection joy in the heavenly kingdom, we pray. For these prayers and for all the intentions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray. O oh God, who know that our life in this present age is subject to suffering and need, hear the desires of those who cry to you, and receive the prayers of those who believe in you, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created right and give you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and work of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy. These gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. 
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
There will be no daily masses this week because Father Francis will be away on a retreat. All 8th graders are invited to attend the, the live team this weekend on Sunday evening, April 25th from 6.45 to 8 p.m. to get to know the group since we will now be able to join the live team next fall. Before our final prayer, one more thing here. So I'd like to call Mary Green forward. And, we have some, and by the way, um, yeah, we have uh, Becky Allen and Sue Christie in about PSR class at uh, School of Religion. So you know, thanks to all of them for everything they do. And a couple of things in the for you. So we have um, a certificate. And, there. and a picture behind it. So let's go now so people can see you and the family they want to be here. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures, the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.